everyone. Welcome to Sisterhood, your weekly magazine show coming to you from beautiful Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you so much for joining us as we come together weekly to bring you some inspiration, information and insights. The intention of Sisterhood is to create a safe place where we can learn and share and explore some of the unique issues people are facing, not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And in the Sisterhood, our aim is to start communicating, collaborating, educating, mm -hmm. and celebrating each other. Yep. All in an effort to develop, to develop stronger relationships and learn from each other's experiences. Yep. In today's show, we have on set with us some very special guests. They are, I would say, some courageous members of the LGBT community who are, for the first time, very openly celebrating LGBT Pride Month in Trinidad and Tobago. That is it. A round of applause. We have with us Rudy. Introduce us out. Rudy Hanamji. I'm the interim chairman of the Pride Arts Festival Committee. Nice. Tracy. Tracy Shepard. I'm the executive member of the Women's Caucus. Good. And Michael. Michael James. Queer student. Queer Scientist. student. Love. Scientist. Lovely. This is, these are our guests. Plus, we also have Pulse of the People, candid and insightful opinions from the LGBT community and our inspirational and motivational segment, Words from the Wise. Yes, plus self-centered, our health, beauty and fitness segment. And our main topic today is meet our LGBT community. We all know that for many years, the local lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community have stayed out of the spotlight. The ones who refuse to hide, like the feminine, gay, and transgenders, mm -hmm. have braved public ridicule so they can be honest about who they are. While the ones who can choose to keep their sexuality to themselves are living many varied shades of a gay life. In Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. So why is it important to give our LGBT community a fair place in our society? Why? Well, today we will be examining that. All this and more when the sisterhood returns. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks very much for staying with us. We'd like to thank all the people who continue to sign up for the Sisterhood group and our Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please encourage at least two yeah. friends to join the Sisterhood. We can only build strength in numbers. Well, let's jump into our first segment in the Sisterhood called, So I was minding my own business oh, and you have to fill in the rest. Mm. So today we will ask our guest to start off. Who's going first? Rudy. So, Penny, I was minding my own business last weekend in the grocery. Yes. So I was trying to decide if to buy a foreign or a local cornflake. Nice. Honestly, local. I took the local. Yeah. <laughs> but this young lady was in the aisle, and she came up to me, and she said, excuse me, very timidly, um, I just wanted to tell you, I saw you on television, and I really admire the work that you and your friends are doing, and keep it up, because it means Good. a lot to me. And... At first, I wasn't sure how to respond, but then I took it and I said, you know, thank you for sharing that. What were you doing on television, in case? I was making trouble. <laughs> ne <laughs> never. Yes, yes, I was actually yes. speaking they, about yes. the upcoming Trinidad and Tobago Pride Arts Festival, right, yeah. which is running from the 22nd of June we launched, mm -hmm. all the way up until the 29th of July. Okay. Oh, wow. And we were talking about why that is important right, right. and calling on our allies and community members to come out and support. And she was touched by that. Yes, she was. Really nice. Was. Yes, exactly. We are affecting somebody's yeah. life out there. I was, I was actually minding my own business yesterday in some floodwaters. Um, yes. On, on my way to... That, yes, that last week. That, yes, yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was on Rice and Water, when Rice and Road and a lot of flood water um, on my way to the right. Pride Memorial. Mm -hmm. When we couldn't go any further and we had to turn around to go back home. And just outside Central Bank, there was a couple standing knee deep in, in flood water really? shouting, taxi, taxi. And so my down the water got soaking wet in the rain again. And... Um, they just asked, can you just get us out of this flood water? So we put these two wet people in the car and we said, well, we're heading east. And, and they said, we don't care where, where you take us, but we just need to get out of the mm -hmm. water. And turned out in talking that they were going to Belmont. And I managed to get around the flood water up to Belmont. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Drop them off. They were actually only visiting Trinidad for two days from New York. Really? They were like, oh, and, and, and they get caught in the flood. Yeah, and they were going to go to Maracas yesterday, and they, oh, the no. driver told them it's overcast, so they decided to walk through Port of Spain. Oh, no, Sunday they were mining their own the business. business. <laughs> well, they got a bath anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so then I then I did find a dry route to get to Pride Memorial. Right. Like, so you see, you yeah. Yeah. Wow, you're a good Samaritan. Keep doing good deeds. Oh, my God. God. Gosh, it's so good to sweet. Yeah, and well, so I was minding my own business walking through St. James and a gentleman yelled across the street at me in a very violent manner and yeah. I was like what are you trying to communicate but regardless I was unimpressed at being yelled at across the street right. and continued about my negatively business. of negatively, course negatively rather I'm I sure. think again okay. I think there's I have a certain way of kind of ignoring and filtering yeah. I think subconsciously some things where I'm like you know I don't need to know what he's saying because he's not right. addressing me in a respectful yes. manner whatsoever Right, so yeah, it's good, nice. You chose to ignore him. Ignore the negativity. Keep walking, yes, yes. Keep walking wow. down. Well, your head high and high. Things. But um, I was minding my own business when I had all my, um, it's very similar to Rudy here, I had all my nieces in the car, and I was leaving the parkade. They had come from the graduation, mm, St. Right. Monica's graduation. St. Monica's yes, grad. graduation. <laughs> so I had all the children in the car, and I'm coming down the parkade, taking forever. They had the parkade, waiting to get my money. And the guy runs out from behind the booth and mm. says, are you Cecilia Salazar? I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> he asked me to sign his arm. He said, could you sign my arm, please? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. all the children and the niece were like, oh, auntie, oh, auntie. <laughs> and yeah, it just felt so good in front of all of them. And nice. I, I did pull out something and <laughs> signed for him. I didn't want to sign it on his arm, so oh, I found man. a piece of paper, old bill, Yes. And I wrote it for him, <laughs> and he kept it. So it was just exciting to be um, noticed and, and acknowledged. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I love when Positively, that not negatively, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, a lot of Trinidadians, they always talk about the Americans and hail the Americans, and, you know, it's so nice when they recognize and they respect our local talent. Yeah. Yes. Good for you. Well, I was minding my own business in, um, in my primary school, Newton Girls, which is the best school in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, so the standard fives are, like, waiting for their results. And, you yes, know, it's good. And, yes. and the results came out last week. But I remember mm -hmm. I was having this discussion with one of the girls. And she was like, Miss, I don't care what school I pass for. You know, I just want to pass. <laughs> And she was just wanted to pass and be successful mm -hmm. and and I and I think that there are lots of children out there that that just feel good when they pass something and and and, and they get good marks and you know they they recognize and the name call out you know for something positive so and I just thought of that yes. side of SDA because you know some children they just nobody acknowledge them nobody yeah. you know mm -hmm. give so them true. any positive kind of thing and then you know they hear that they pass so I thought that was good. Yes, so that's, that's it. fantastic. Congrats yes. to all those who passed. Yes, so those are some fabulous stories, yes. you know. But we have to stop here and go on yes. with the show. So yes, and when we return, we plunge into today's main topic: meet our LBGT community. We will be right back. Sisterhood, and now we step into today's main topic: meet our LGBT community. Mm. <laughs> Gay people in Trinidad and Tobago have historically been some of the most creative souls yes. that have crossed this land. However, they have stayed as hidden and as invisible as possible for many years. People may suspect someone is gay, but it is not something we share or make it comfortable for people to share about themselves. That has led many gay Trinidad and Tobagonians to live double lives. Mm -hmm. Because gay people cannot be honest with the people around them about who they are and, and who they love. This attitude of secrecy has encouraged a society with many shades of gay. The macho roughneck on the down low. The husband who has the secret life. Yeah. The one who have to get married because the family insists hidden and perverted because they cannot be honest about who they are because there's so much judgment placed on the gays in our society it has led to a lot of hiding and breathing of a habit of dishonesty for so many in our society that's so mm -hmm. true so what do you think about what i said and do you agree with that i mean we've had so many dong low in mm. in this country, a lot of men who are they say on it the seems every other man you meet is a DL. Yes, a DL. But you know, Penny, you, you spoke about living. 
Mm-hmm. I actually want to turn that on its head and say that it, that's not living. Mm-hmm. Because you never know your own truth. Yeah. So you, there are many gay persons mm-hmm. who will get to 50, 60 years old and they have never lived their truth. Yeah. So that type of living and life is robbing them of their full potential. Yeah, and mm-hmm. unfortunately, as you said, so the truth is, yes, it does lead to dishonest practices. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. if you can't be true to yourself, you're going to hide. Anybody else. You're exactly. going to hide. You're exactly. going to be in the closet, so to speak. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then we, we, the first part talked about the creatives. Yeah. There's so many creatives and we accept it. But mm. it's a creative yeah. person. We say, oh, they're creative. Yeah. And we accept it. We don't talk about the other side. We just yeah. say, oh, they're creative. And we put it on a level yeah. there. Yeah. It's like, it's as, as if, gay. um, and then it's like, you, you want to put, oh, he's gay. Oh, she's gay. Yeah, you go with the actors and them. Or yeah. You go with the creative right. people. They, as if they lump all the um uh, gay people. But as you're saying, that's not creatives. necessarily all of the gay of people. Of course, it's not. Really 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 engineers, engineers, lawyers, we know lawyers that. footballers. Uh, Michelle uh, Ayi. Yes, yes, we have a lot of people. Track and field. What do you thought about what you said? Well, for me, I, I am on the opposite. I've always been very out and open, and I've never faced any discrimination of Yeah, because your mother is guy. in the arts. Yeah, my mother is in the arts. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't mean she's gay. I know. She's not, no, 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 I know. I know. She's, she's exposed to uh, us. I know that is yeah. all. She's, she's exposed, and you know, mm-hmm. like, um, I have never actually had to say to anybody that, that I was gay. You know, I probably, mm-hmm. that's the first time I've probably just said it, but, you know. Yeah, right, right, right. And I've never faced any discrimination, not in the workplace, not in my personal life, not in 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 my family life or my clients. I've never Do you think, that Michael, is, is it easier for good. women than men? I think men? there definitely exactly. is a difference in the mm-hmm. societal reaction towards wom- women who are same gender loving as opposed to men. Um, I think also if you transgress gender boundaries, if you're wearing lipstick or nail polish as a guy or a perceived guy, I think there's a lot um, harsher and stricter judgment and control put there. Yeah, you see, part of that is, of course, the patriarchal society. Mm-hmm. Women face it already. Yeah. So if you de- deviate from what it is to be a man, mm. you are then placed in a woman's category and therefore you are less than. So mm. we as gay men, we appreciate some of the struggles that women go through. Right. Because if a man looks at a woman as less, and therefore if you're effeminate, mm-hmm. you are equal to less than I as a man. Right, mm-hmm. right. Then we don't agree with that either. No, exactly. No. That makes so much mm. sense. Mm. Um, well, like today's young person has mm. access to so much sexual content before the age of 18. Tell me about it. I feel if there's no real place and safe place for young gay people to learn about having healthy relationships. Yeah. They will be drawn to the underground of the internet and find themselves in very dark and ugly sexual encounters mm-hmm. that can leave them emotionally scarred or even dead. Yep. And, and this goes for both, eh? both yeah. sexes. But if they have to hide so much, mm-hmm. what are the, some of the bad experiences that you've heard or uh, that have happened from these situations that you can share with yeah, us? Yeah. Well, I think it gets to the point you were making about dishonesty and ability to be honest and open with parents and or guardians. If you feel like you can't talk to them, you can't, you are in a more vulnerable position because you're not going to be able to say, hey, mom, I'm going out on a date. I'm going to meet someone. And, you know, people don't know where you are. You're lost. You, you're lost and you're, you go missing and you're lost because no one knew where you were. You couldn't communicate about who you were meeting, where you were going, what club. You know, that kind of thing. So it puts so you in a more that, vulnerable yeah, exactly. space. It puts Very you in a doubly vulnerable space. Mm-hmm. Wow. Older gay people in Trinidad and Tobago have gotten very comfortable staying out of the spotlight. They feel coming out and saying they are gay means that is all society will think about them when they interact with them. Their sexual life becomes forefront and not the skill or the talent mm-hmm. they are recognized for anymore just because they're gay. How do the younger gay community look at this? And what makes them feel that this should change? Well, you, we had, as part of the Pride Arts Festival, mm-hmm. one of the first events was actually called mm-hmm. Generation Gap. Mm-hmm. And in that session, we brought together older generations and younger generations. Mm-hmm. And that exact question, Penny, was mm-hmm. explored. Right. And what we realized is that many young millennials let's say yeah. they have no concept of who came before so in their eyes they're no pioneers they're no role they models. Where would they learn it? because 
and uh, everything is connected in the conversation because the older generation felt that they needed to be so private mm-hmm. now it doesn't mean that some of them were necessarily hiding yes. but they just didn't own it exactly. that's yes, that yes, word. yes 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 yeah. yes and bec- as a result of that there's this disconnect mm-hmm. now the strange thing is many people knew yeah we of all course. knew and that's the mm-hmm. thing in Trinidad we all know mm-hmm. fortunately yeah, some of them over the years realized that people would focus on their work their great skill yeah and unfortunately some still don't so young people are actually calling out our elders and saying identify you have a whole community of us behind you mm-hmm. and people are going to continue to support your work and then you can live in your truth yeah and it will help us and the younger ones because we can feel better about ourselves yeah. and see a trajectory for yeah, us. Yeah, now is the time happening. the whole world is changing and yeah. it's time for Trinidad and Tobago to step out of the mm-hmm. dark yeah. ages. Yes. <laughs> because um, there's a large part of our society that teaches homophobia. Oh yeah. Which is they encourage dislike or prejudice against homosexual people. There are many people who feel they have the right to tell another grown individual who they should love and how they should live their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh what are some of the horrors that gay society face because of this homophobia in Trinidad and Tobago? I mean, I I I think I th- as I said that I just remember the death of that guy, the transgender guy who won yes. Queen of Queens and I saw Sasha. Yes, Sasha. 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 And that yes, must yeah. have been homophobia and I I I'm thinking guys like him, I mean they always in the dark and they and they do things in the darkness of the night and they don't know who they're dealing with and some of these 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 people that they deal with and i mean would just want the encounter and then want to die after is as i love hate with some men i think sometimes because i i would i would see men having relationships with with, with gay people but when they're outside and they're talking with their, their friends it's like hey me and um that be thing yeah and you know so some I think some are, yeah but you are the guys you so tell we us. live in a hypocritical society we, do. yeah. we yes. don't own it and we we deny it homophobia homophobia is real yeah. I mean I think the issue a lot of the times was also that queer people are essentialized to sex acts part of the fear and the the drama associated with you know me walking down the street is that people see me walking and they see a sex act they say oh my god yes. he is having anal intercourse he's doing yes. all this stuff and so they deem you then unfit to to act and to interact with children and stuff yes. like that. That's where we've got all kind of nonsense where people identify queerness with all kind of deviant sexuality, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is just unnecessary and untrue. Like you don't Of course. You know, just because I'm gay does not mean I'm going to not be a great actor, chef, exactly. yes. cook, Folk. scientist. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And Interest instead of appreciating all of those skills and talents that I have, you're essentializing me to a sex act based on who I love. Yeah. Which yeah. is just but completely how ironic. How do we deal with this homophobia? Just, but how just do we ironically, for women, yeah. I know some men, they are turned on by lesbian sex. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know, Tracy, uh, from a female perspective, <laughs> you may not face some of the the perversive, pers- the perverted perceptions mm-hmm. that we well, face. I mean, to be honest, I, I, I don't display a public display of affection to say that, mm. you know, that... the average drug they're going to know that I'm a lesbian. But that's what I was just about to say. Yeah, so Chase, she's a parent so you I know would not guess that she is a lesbian because a lesbian is supposed to look a certain way. Oh. Close to a man. Oh, like how apparently well, again, a lot of people no. the stereotype yeah, stereotype yes, preconceived notions. Yes. Mm. Right. I want you to tell me about the homophobia that the young people that after the whole meeting and all of the bug we law there were a lot of young people and families were put in them out because of Landlords this. Landlords were put in them out too and families were put in them out because they just didn't know it. And it's always a shock and I tell them to I tell the young people to be patient. If your parents or your family put you out, there are safe places that you can go. Mm-hmm. And be patient with them. Don't get angry with your parents. Say your parents say give you life. Mm-hmm. Just be patient. They will come back along. And I've seen that through the work that the Women's Caucus has done with young people. And young people have come to the Women's Caucus in conversations and said they they're going through a really hard time. They feel suicidal. Their parents have put them out. Their families not talking to them. And you just have to be patient. And eventually, your family mm-hmm. will come around. Um, time. The time most important is. event for the gay community recently was the repealing of the Bugwee laws. a very small step towards getting the law changed what are some of the negative reactions you have had and some of the fears that came out of that well i actually got a death threat mm. and i mean mm. knock on wood nothing has come out of it but 
on the steps of the Hall of Justice representatives of a certain Muslim sect. And I want to make the point that not all are Muslim or Catholic or religious brothers and sisters hate us. No. But a representative of one particular sect actually accosted and spat on one of our female friends. I heard about that. And that is, and we caught on video, so I'm not even making this up. But that represented some of the angst mm-hmm. that was coming out of people and the fear. Fear, and so afraid. We mm-hmm. just had to maintain our composure and and process it, be, and support each other and yes, our allies. Yes, of course, you know our allies are so important mm-hmm. in helping us deal with. And as you say, things. allies. I remember our uh, Nikki was there at the one, and and we had, and and Nikki got hunt, yeah. lost friends. Nikki lost people um, didn't want to be her friend on Facebook or Instagram oh. anymore and she got a lot of hate a lot of hate because mm. yeah. she was um, promoting and, yeah, and, and being supportive yeah, with how we mm-hmm. silence and mm-hmm. hide and, and again I, relegate to, queerness to yeah. the private sphere I want to swing back to, to the situation with the, with the attack on the wall of justice steps mm. I just want to say to people like just keep the calm because yeah. I, went, I went back to my car after the announcement I was parked in a car park on Frederick Street and that same group of people that had incited the violence were huddled together in a corner right next to where my car was parked. And I could have walked up big and bad or I could have just right. run away, but I just went, I was leaving. I just went to my car, stopped my car, mm-hmm. said hello, goodbye. They said hello, goodbye, and everything was peaceful. So it's just to keep the calm. Keep the calm. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't encourage them. Don't encourage. And don't mm-hmm. ask for them. permission. Don't Sorry. ask for permission to be, to live, yeah. to exist, mm-hmm. to live your best life. As Rudy was saying earlier, we're not just out here trying to live. We're trying to thrive. I'm yeah. not surviving. I'm, survival is not an option. No. Yeah, it's yeah. not acceptable. I'm thriving. And you cannot prevent me from accessing um, public life, civil life, mm-hmm. with yeah. friends and family and going out and going on a date and holding a man's hand. I think part of the reason why the repeal of the buggery law has been such a big deal is because the buggery law, as we've all discussed, this has been discussed many times, was not really being enforced. Mm -hmm. But what it did was create a scenario where queer people felt actively, queer people were understood within the eyes of the law Mm -hmm. as well as kind of civil general society as illegal, as potentially illegal, as Mm -hmm. immoral. Because people didn't know that the law also criminalized heterosexual intercourse. They just saw it as a gay gay thing. thing, And also Section 16 criminalized lesbian in sex, the mm. yep. mm. So it's, it's a very complex issue, but people decide what they want to pull out of it. Right, mm. right. And that's where the unfairness happens. Mm-hmm. 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 Good. Okay, ladies, let's go to, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, forgive me. <laughs> let's go to the individuals. <laughs> Let's go to Pulse of the People, a segment where we speak to the people on the streets and get their thoughts and opinions. My name is Kennedy Mirage and I'm the Chief Administrative Officer for the Silver Lion Foundation, which is a guardian body for LGBTQIA youth, and we seek to prevent suicide, discrimination and bullying. Um, one of the projects we have is something called Stronger Families, which is a psychosocial support group for parents and guardians of LGBTQIA children. Um, the purpose of this project is to provide an avenue of support for parents who are dealing with their child sexual orientation or gender identity and or expression. It's an avenue for them to voice their concerns and to find a way towards not just tolerance but acceptance of their LGBTQIA child so that they can create an environment that is leaning leaning towards more love and support and acceptance. What it's like being gay in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, For me, I can't say that I'm a person who has ever um, needed someone else to tell me that it's okay to be who I am or to do something that I wanted to do. I found my own conscience and my instinct and um, I guess from a young age I decided that I, well, I realized that I liked women as well as men and um, I pursued it eventually when I found somebody that I liked. Um, and I can't say that I tried to hide it. I didn't try to flaunt it either. I just decided to do what I wanted to do. 
and allow people to treat with that however they want to do and unless they got up in my face then their reaction I didn't make that my problem. I live in as a LGBTQI family sometimes it's challenging despite the odds and all I want is just to be in my own comfortable skin, authentic skin and Sometimes you lose friends and family because of who you are and you want to be real, you want to just be free and not just get discriminated by. Um, it's hard, but being who you are, it makes you feel, it makes you feel free. You don't want to pretend, you don't want nobody to say, okay, um, today, you're not, you're not the person that's who you think you are and you don't want to be in closet, you don't want to be closed, you want to be out, you want to be free, you want to show everybody that this is who you are and to love you the way you are. Um, despite what people might, may think and how much friends and family you may lose, I think being yourself is better and not just pretending um, sometimes at work's place or so anywhere you go, you know, you hear a lot of gossip, you hear the shoo shoo in, and you feel, you feel like inside of you is so emotional. But, yeah, you know, I stand strong and of who I am. So, being persistent and being real with persons. I think it's a challenge, but I love me and this is who I am. Because I choose to live my life to please me. Um, for many of us, we, we live our life trying to please other people and in the end we are not comfortable with, with who we are. But this is who I am, this is who I am comfortable being and I'm happy with that. Despite what people think. Because as I said earlier, you're not, you would never be able to please everybody. So you have to please yourself, yes, and be comfortable at the same time. Right, really good, really good, really good, really great discussion. It's really good to see um, the young gay people standing in their own truth. Yes. yes. Standing yeah. up and speaking out for themselves and, and yes. a transgender. Yes. Transgender, right? Yes. Trans yes. Transgender person coming out and speaking for themselves and yes, yes. how did you say it speaking the out? narrative was the saying your own thing having the narrative spoken by the people whose experience it is rather than being told by others who yeah. do not really identify but are trying to put a story on it that they don't yep. really yes. understand for first time yeah. excellent and i think a lot of um trend i just always see one type of um transgender person mm -hmm. in the forum and you think that all of like that you know the yeah, these there are trans people that look like me. me. There's yes. a lot of stereotyping. Yeah, yeah. But there's yeah. a space for everyone, right? Yeah. And they do it with women and men putting you in a box. Yeah. And if you're not in this box, you're not right. Exactly. And that's that's what this discussion is about. Good, great. Yeah. However, we have to go to commercial commercial break, people. When we return, we will explore our LGBT community. Thank you. Back, welcome back. You're viewing Sisterhood, a weekly show where we address some of the issues facing not only women, but all of Trinidad and Tobago. And today's topic is meet our LGBT community. Well, we have heard some of um, the negative situations yeah. in that exist in the gay community. What is the intention of your organization? Exactly to place a positive spotlight on the amazing contribution that the LGBT community has made to national development, even before we were in an independent nation, because we've always been around. Mm -hmm. And I'm not speaking stereotypically only in arts and fashion and theater, but as scientists, doctors, attorneys, politicians, mm -hmm. past and present, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes, we're gonna call them out sometimes. Yes, yeah. we but, a book. But the yeah. Pride Arts Festival, what Pride has been celebrated in Trinidad and Tobago for nearly 30 years. Yeah. Really? But it has been, for lack of a better word, 
forced to be discreet. Yeah. This year, we wanted, on the heels of the momentum created by the Jason Jones case, to create that safe space for different segments of the community to come mm-hmm. together, build camaraderie, and celebrate their contribution. Mm-hmm. That, that is what is this so festival important. is all about. I mean, um, mm-hmm. So Very why do you think it's so important for you to be seen and have a voice in our society? Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is... No, because I pay taxes. Exactly. I pay yes. taxes. You pay taxes. <laughs> Um, and I think you have to just recognize that we are trying to live our best lives, not as I was talking about earlier, not just survive, but to thrive and to celebrate being mm-hmm. who we are. Mm-hmm. What about homophobia and, and, and violence and bullying of gay people? How are you all going to address things like that, situations like that? Well, <laughs> there is the, the um, we have protection from the police. The mm-hmm. police are very sensitized to, to the situations and we are asking anybody that's receiving that type of treatment to please report. Mm-hmm. To, you know, we have different locations. We have Defense for Life. We have the Kaiso House. Friends for Life is um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, just, just report it to us. You know. and, and, you're and to the we're police. We're working yeah. really Make closely with... Um, so Kaiso House, one of the main organizations, or um, and Kaiso is doing trying to get adult free legislation done. So adding age gender um, and sexuality, as well as um, HIV status and health status to our Equal Opportunity Act. Mm-hmm. Yes, Opportunity very Commission, important. Exactly. Because that will allow a, another avenue for people to report these things and for them mm-hmm. to be addressed. Mm-hmm, exactly. So we are collecting those stories, even if they're not able to be reported officially to the um, to the EOC. There's also ways in which cyberbullying, you can try and yes. get it under through cyberbullying and to the cyberbullying laws. And I think the spotlight that was created recently has created that, that appreciation by the authorities that they have to treat with this in the right way. Because people would like to believe that they can trust their police officers. Yeah. And you don't want to have a report where someone goes into a station as has happened in the past, mm-hmm. and then be turned away or ridiculed. Yes. So there has to be trust building on both sides. The police service, credit to those that d- deserve credit, are trying to rebrand and show the public that you right. can come to them for protection. Good. And then we, in the community, have to trust that we can go to them for, for the protection that they're right. there to provide. Yeah, right. it's great. It's great. Right. Based on yeah. What advice you all will give to a young gay person coming out and they have accepted their homosexuality and what advice you will give them to, to, to go through that journey? I mean, your parents, they, they have to go to school, they have yeah, to go society. whatever club you might be in. So I want to say know, that you yeah. don't advice. have to be out. You don't have to be out. It is powerful and wonderful and excellent to be able to be out and to celebrate your life. But if it puts you in a scenario where you are endangered, if you're going to become homeless and stuff like that, those are real concerns. And so you don't have to be out. You don't have to feel pressured to be more public with your sexuality or gender than anyone else does. Yeah. Straight mm-hmm. people don't Why come do out as straight, to? so yeah. you don't have yeah. to come out. I right. really don't like Good the notion point. of this compulsory come out mm-hmm. narrative. Really I know, but I'm, I mean, a young person, uh, they, they, want, they want to bring their boyfriend or the girlfriend home mm-hmm. to their house. You know, some kind of, um, what advice would you give them? No, don't do it, or what? Hmm. I would say just to be always honest with yourself. You honest know? with yourself? Yeah, I, I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, that's all I ask for, from anybody is honesty, because that's what I have to give in mm-hmm. return. And honest with your, your family uh, uh, around you, and, mm-hmm. and, and hope that they could be able to deal to with understand. it. understand. Yeah. So, there is no one fix it all. You yeah. have Each to navigate your situation. But you a, a very good friend of mine, Anthony Medina, always said to me, you have a mirror. You look in that mirror and be honest first with yourself mm-hmm. and learn to love yourself mm-hmm. so that no matter the situation, if you cannot be honest with your family or your friends, mm-hmm. Once you have that honesty with yourself, you never lose your identity. Mm-hmm. So and true. that would be my best advice. On top of that, though, <laughs> when we were younger, we didn't have Facebook. 
believe it or not, mm-hmm. and Snapchat. <laughs> and and yeah, I, uh, we did, right? Yes, imagine. But you have information and access now no. yes. to this wider community. There are some of us who ha- are now creating safe spaces for well, you, like you can, yeah, you can reach out. Reach out. Yeah. yeah. So exactly, you can reach out now. Yeah. Call them. You're gonna, I suppose mm-hmm. we'll have numbers that you'll see after the show, where if a young person wants some advice, I'm like, how am I going to call? I'm going to tell my mother, or if I, a person yes. wants, to, I have, I want to tell my employer about my status, even you know, whatever. So you, you can know, call any call of these numbers and, talk, and get some advice. advice. Yeah. That's wonderful. Nice, nice. So what is the impact you want to have on the general? public what do you want them to understand about um, about this whole movement what do you want to, to Def- leave with them definitely that the LGBT community is not something to be feared it is something to be celebrated as with any other segment of mm-hmm. our society mm-hmm. because of the contributions that we make and because we are your family yes. yeah. and your countrymen and we can all work together mm-hmm. to build a more positive society. Yes. Yes. So if by executing this festival, we can achieve that, and at the same time, save lives. Mm-hmm. If young mm-hmm. or even older LGBTQI mm-hmm. persons can s- stop harming themselves, feel more empowered, and begin living their truth, mm-hmm. we may never know who that one or 10 or how many pe- people mm-hmm. are. Right. I think the committee accepted. would be mm-hmm. happy. Yes. yes. I want to do something for me quickly. Break down LGBTIQ for me, for the people who might not know the what's the acronym about. Well, the L is lesbian, G gay, B bisexual, T transgender, um, Q is queer, Q queer, yeah. I is intersex. What is intersex? That is. Intersex is when you are born with a mix of the male and female sex category, so it's very much a biological thing in terms of people who have XXY or all kind of different um, genetic. And there's some children when they're born, they have to choose, you know, when a child is born, the the doctor has to make that choice. Well, there is a whole conversation now about that. Should the parent choose? Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently, I I remember, I don't know, I don't want to misquote, but someone was quoting the statistics in Trinidad and Tobago and we've had a number of those cases. Really? really and yeah. some parents have actually left alone mm-hmm. and they agreed that when the child is of age, they will he or do. she will agree. I mean, so many of our um, brothers and sisters are leaving this country to go somewhere else to, to, to seek asylum. They're giving up their passport and, and they have to, to seek as acceptance and, 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 and they're giving up their identity, the Trinidadian identity. And I think that's so so, so wrong. And what's sad is when they go, they, they the... can't come back because when they when they accept the asylum, they have to stay. Yeah, they have to stay there, and uh, yeah, and they have to learn a new language and just become a new person. I because, think all of that yeah. speaks to the length, the lengths that you're describing. I speak to the amount of pressure that people feel, the amount of pressure that queer and gay and however you want to say it, people in China and Tobago feel as they try to move through their daily lives. Yeah. The amount of aggression and challenges Game. we face because of who we love or how we love. Um, but I, I want to make the point that there's a dichotomy. On one side, it's important for many of us who are empowered and enjoy living in Trinidad and Tobago mm-hmm. to I own who we are and show others mm-hmm. that are, because the dichotomy then is the other side is the more vulnerable ones. Right. Mm-hmm. They face a lot of what Michael is referring mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. The, you know, being put out of their homes, as yes. Tracy said, the victimization, mm-hmm. the cat calling, the bullying, uh, because there's a classism issue in Trinidad and Tobago, which we well. all know. Yes. So th- the solution here r- starts at home, charity begins at home. Mm-hmm. We that have privilege or protections or insulation, we have to come out, identify, and protect those in our community that are more vulnerable yeah. and work with our allies Use so that they won't to leave. Empower others who yeah. do not have Because we, lo- we really have a, a major brain drain, as you say, yeah. in, in, in this country. Yeah. All right, so what do you think about that, Tracy? What do you think about the brain drain and, and all these young people and, and, and leaving our shores to seek a, to seek a better man for themselves? Well, you know, the, the public might say, let them go, you know, let the gay people go. We oh, don't yes. want them here, but, you know, we, we I can do. see all those, yes. We, we do, work. you know, it's important. That they do. We, Trinidadians are so family-oriented, you know, to have one member of your family just go away. This is, this is somebody's auntie, somebody's uncle, somebody's brother, sister, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, and of mm-hmm. course, a member of our society who has contributed a great deal in, in, in talent in some way or the other 
in various in business or, or um, in the arts or the theater or you know even in carnivals many of our mass makers have gone as well yes and, and, and there's a lot of people in this country the haters let them go we don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. you know how we you say know, it in Trinidad we yes. call it what um, Balaman and Mako yeah. Man. what do you feel those people need to know about you well first of all the haters still is. yes <laughs> my answer to that has always been present miss Yes. I the a man. Yes. <laughs> but what that really means at the end of the day is that for me, I fall in love with another man. It doesn't mean that I'm any less capable of performing the functions that a human being mm-hmm. should be performing. Absolutely. Because many of us, again, have excelled in our professions yeah. and our personal life. So in a strange way, I have a lot of um, straight friends who may have begun with misperceptions. But if you give us a chance, you realize that we can actually be just like you and stand toe to toe with you. So I, I dare any of them to come forward and, 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 and show make, me that he's a man. Yes, and, and <laughs> make our society better. Yeah. That's my, what my, one of my oldest things is, I always say is, let God do the judging. Right. Just That's leave exactly it to him. Yes. Just leave it to him. Mm-hmm. I want to do what God told me to do. Love one mm-hmm. another. I want to love one another. I want to respect each other. Love and one when another. God comes, He will decide what to do. Do it. Or what Allah, to do and who? Allah, or Allah or, she, who, or Shiva or, she, or when she whatever. Comes. When that time yes. comes, let that let God do the judging. Because but right we, now, we let's have, live. There are a lot of and LGBT and persons who are very religious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They love their I religion. So many. Yeah. And they do not want to be hated by the leaders of their various religions mm-hmm. because they are accepted by their congregation yeah. Yeah. and they mm-hmm. profess love for their, their God. Mm-hmm. Because I think in Trinidad, I mean, we have all those stigmas, but deep down we really do care about our community and the people within our of community. Yeah. Gay and, and, mm-hmm. and, and I think so. Anyway, thank you everyone. Much more when we return. We have a lot of it. With the sisterhood. The sisterhood. We'll be back. We must know that we can learn from each other's experiences and gain strength from that knowledge. So in an effort to encourage sharing, we move into our next segment called A Word from the Wise. Hello, my name is Sharon Motley. I grew up in Diamond Vale, Diego Martin. I'm 51 years old, so I grew up in a time when we used to roam the neighborhood, when Diamond Vale was now a new community, and there were a lot of young people. And we used to just adventure. We used to go through every trail, every street. We used to go to church. We had fun. We got into a lot of trouble. Um, We used to do trick-or-treating before Halloween was something to do, just because we wanted to get stuff. Um, I was a very mischievous child, but very outgoing. Um, As I look at the rain around me, I remember playing tennis in the streets and bathing in the rain and all of that good stuff. And I went to Sacred Heart Girls, an all-girls school, and that was quite interesting because I was a troublemaker, so I was always in trouble. I talked too much in class, um, and then I graduated and went on to Bishop Anstey High School, much to my mother's surprise. She couldn't believe that I actually made it to my first choice. And my years at Bishop's were also very, very interesting. I was always in the principal's office, getting into trouble, but I loved to talk. And that was the thing that people remembered me most for. I talked and talked and always stood up for people who were in trouble and et cetera. And then after leaving Bishop's, I did A-levels there as well. And then after A-levels, I wanted to go abroad to school. And my mother said, no. She actually forged my signature and I went off to UE, where I completed a degree in sociology. And of course, I was partying down the line. But we party, we play cards, we went to class every once in a while as well. But it was mainly about the partying. Um, and then after I graduated from university, I decided that I realized that I was different, that I needed to live somewhere else just so that I could be more myself and I moved to the United States of America um, and started off very simply. I had a college degree, but I used to babysit and answer telephones. 
until I got my first job with the National Urban League in New York and it was actually running an HIV prevention project and this was a time that people were dying from HIV not only um, members of the gate community but also African Americans and um, I think that for me opened my eyes to the world of uh, social issues that people faced and it embedded in me a need to make change. Um, and then um, I had my son and I went into private sector. So I worked for an investment bank, Goldman Sachs, before coming back to Trinidad to work for private sector Trinidad and Tobago. But the calling to do work in um, HIV was great. And I left my private sector job and worked for a regional NGO, which looked at HIV prevention, education and support. And I worked there for a few years before moving on to do research on HIV prevalence among men who had sex with men. Then I worked on a gender-based violence project. And then I recently completed a research study looking at HIV prevalence among female sex workers in Trinidad. So looking at my background, while it's very diverse, it really was about trying to see how we could address some of the pressing social issues that face people here in Trinidad and Tobago. And of course, being a lesbian, um, the rights of LGBTQI are always at the forefront uh, because I believe we all are human beings and we must all be treated fairly and just. Um, and yeah, and I think that's what I would love to share about me. Um, the biggest lesson I think I've learned over the years is persistence, that there will always be people who try to detract you from your mission and your goal and um, the importance of being resilient and persistent and having a clear direction and even as hurdles come in your path, how do we overcome those hurdles and stay true to our mission and true to ourselves? The biggest challenge I think I've had to overcome is the loss of my mother in 2014. My mother and I did not have an ideal relationship. She didn't understand me and you could imagine it was difficult having a lesbian for a daughter. But we had a really strong relationship even in conflict. Um, and when she got, um, she got ill with cancer and it went away and it came back, I moved out of my house and went to be with her so we c I could help her transition. And there's nothing like losing your mother. But I also welcomed the experience of having to, of being by her side when she actually died. And so I think um, living life without my mom has been my biggest challenge. Oh, what I would love to see for Trinidad and Tobago is happening right now. Um, and that's for LGBTQI people to be recognized, to gain rights. Um, we are on that journey. Um, our goal is to not stop until um, sexual orientation has been added to the Equal Opportunities Act. And so I wish it for Trinidad and Tobago where we can recognize that all people um, deserve to be, to be treated fairly, um, that there's room for all of us in this country and that we don't need to hate somebody or to, to fear people in order to feel strong ourselves. What I always wish was that I could be totally free. And I know that's really difficult, uh, but I love this sense of freedom. I love this sense of being who I am and living my authentic self. It took a long while, but I'm at that point that I'm ready to live my authentic self. And I just wish all young people don't wait until they're 51 to recognize that it's possible to achieve all you want and, and to live your authentic self and to be kind and generous and live in a non-violent way. I am most grateful for the, most, the people that I've met over the last 15 years living in Trinidad. Trinidad is filled, uh, filled with beautiful, compassionate, wonderful people. When we strip away all that's like bad or negative around us, we get to the core essence of who we are, and I'm grateful I've had the opportunity to follow my dream, work in social causes that make a difference, and meet a lot of beautiful people along the way. Thank you. Yep. That was our word from the wise. Thank you so much for sharing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that leads us to our word of the week. What is the one word you want to take into next week? that will focus you, motivate you, and keep you grounded. Mm -hmm. One word. One word. One word. Just one word. You ready? Word. My word would have to be. Yeah. No, ladies, please. Yes, yes. Oh, no, three, you have three ladies. Oh, <laughs> our lady guest, go ahead. My word would be forgiveness. 
because I think that forgiveness is very important. You know, if anybody's done you wrong, if anybody has crossed the wrong side of your path, you just got to forgive and go on doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I think with forgiveness, we can all be better people. I so agree. Lovely. That's a wonderful mm -hmm. forgiveness. So necessary. She has to forget, <laughs> <laughs> but forgive. Mm -hmm. My word would have to be pride. Mm -hmm. We have right. to develop that sense of pride for our truth, who we are, but also proud of the country that we live in mm -hmm. and that we want to make it a better place. So that's going to push me into next week and keep me nice. Mm -hmm. nice. Very nice. good. I love nice. it. All of us. Yes. All of us. <laughs> Sweetie, my word is queer and I use it both as a noun and a verb so to be queer to queer to question to live outside the boundaries and to think about what's acceptable and what's not um, and actualize a different future one that has not been shown to me but one that I will find ways to create mm -hmm. through the margins in and mm -hmm. between the corners well, that don't fit. I, I love to hear him speak yes <laughs> so my word for the week uh, I, I, it just came to me out of something that you all said mm -hmm. earlier, and it is resilience. Mm -hmm. Because I think that that is what is necessary, not only for the gay community, but for all of us in Trinidad and mm -hmm. Tobago right now, as we keep moving forward, yes. trying to break boundaries, trying to make changes, mm -hmm. trying to stand up in our strength. We have to be resilient and keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Um, my word, I have, I have so many words going on yeah, in my yeah, head. They come and you go. You know, so many positive words going on in my head. And um, one of the words I would say is encouragement. Okay, I think nice. it's good that we have to encourage each, each other. other. To yes. be mm -hmm. whoever you want to be. Encourage your, your neighbor, encourage your friends, encourage your, 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 your sister, your brother. Just encourage them to be themselves. Yeah. And I think it's important that people be themselves and people to accept each other for being themselves. I love that encourage so because they, you can yes. encourage them to get help, they encourage yes. them yeah. to, to so seek a friend. Friend. Exactly, encourage, yeah. encourage people in each other. So, so that's wow, it. wow. We, well, I want to thank everybody for viewing yes. and extend this special invitation to you to join the sisterhood group. It is totally free, all right? And we want you to be part of our movement. The intention for us is to form a large, powerful group of ladies who will come together in the sisterhood to communicate, collaborate, and celebrate each other. Yes, it's very easy to join, you know. Just log on to the sisterhoodtt.com and click join the sisterhood. Or go to the Sisterhood Foundation of Trinidad and Tobago page on Facebook and you will find the join the sisterhood form. Easy, 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 easy like easy. easy. <laughs> We want this to be more than just a weekly television show, but a movement that can make the lives of women, not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but the region better by coming together to communicate and collaborate and celebrate our greatness oh, yes. as Caribbean women in this world. Mm -hmm. Sisterhood. Sisterhood. And I, I want to thank all those who tuned in today. Yeah. We will be back next week, same place, same time. Remember, we also want you to get your sisterhood bracelet. Yes, I did. I show you. I like it. It is, yes, it is a seven chakra and lava stone diffuser bracelet. That means you can add your own fragrance to the lava stone. Mm -hmm. And the seven chakra um, semi precious stones here, they are said to have healing powers. And they look a little bit like a rainbow, too. Yes, yes it does. They're available for a $100 contribution and they come in a lovely gold pouch. So we are wearing ours and we want you to get, get yours. yours. Please. We also want you to look out for our live sisterhood empowerment events coming up soon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And we're really excited. The sisterhood is here. And in the next few weeks, we have so many great topics to share with you. And we hope you'll be able to learn something from this experience with us. And we hope that you have a wonderful Pride Week. Go out to yes, all the Pride, Pride Week. Pride Month. Yes. Pride Month for having yes. us. Pride, Pride Month. Month, yes. So we're going to have the sisterhood with us. Yes, then. we're going to yeah, have the sisterhood. Down. We're going to come out and support. on July 28th. The true like 28th is a yes. parade. And um, nice. Well, like come out in your rainbow color. Uh, okay. So visit queertt.com for all the information. Right. You hear that, people? So that is that is it. That is it, people. That's it for this week's episode. Join us next week for much more. Bye for now. And as we always say, let's take care of each other, TNT. Bye.